schools. I want my grandchildren to go to the public schools as long as those public schools are performing like they should. But if they're not, I'm going to get them out. It really incenses me at times when our public school uh, officials uh, demand that we pay them excellent salaries, and we do. I, I, you may argue about that, but I, I think we do. But you want, they want a salary commensurate with the ability. If the schools are not providing for their own children or grandchildren, then they move them somewhere else, okay, and either in a private or another public school. I don't like for those people to tell me that those low-income people shouldn't have some of those same opportunities mm -hmm. uh, when they're especially in those public schools. Okay, uh, they wouldn't leave their kids in those failing schools. I don't think they should demand that the low-income people leave their their kids. Good. Well, let me ask the two of you. We got only five minutes left in this broadcast. I'm going to hit you with a new subject on education. Hadn't come, but the issue's coming. Last year, we passed the Property Tax Relief Act. As you know, we took all of owner-occupied property off of the books for public education. State picked that tab up. But now the state is trying to use the index of taxpayer ability to distribute the state money under the EFA. Now, if funding for public education is important, how can we justify certain counties who have had their taxes base taken away from them? They're told they're going to get less money from the state. What's y'all's response to that? Do you think that the Property Tax Reform Act, uh, by implication, did away with the index of taxpayer ability or not? Uh, I I sat, on, I sat on the ad hoc committee that studied the property tax issues in the House and helped develop that, that bill. Uh, bill Cotty was the chair of that committee. I think he done an excellent job in it, but it was my understanding that it basically did away with the, the index of tax paying ability because what it, in my recollection anyway, is, you know, a school district got X dollars what is it, 2006 and 2007, then it grows, and, and I think we made a mistake in the bill, we're going to have to, we're going to, to correct, but it grows by uh, CPI plus uh, plus growth, uh, can grow for that. Population growth. Population, right. But it's got, population growth is going to change, but it's going to be student growth. Right. It's got, they put, we, we talked about student growth, okay, in, in the House version of the bill. And that's a, I think we did population growth of the district, but not student growth. But, but the problem you're is you've got areas like on the coast of Beaufort County, Hilton Head, where you've got a lot of people coming in and retiring. You don't have kids, okay? But, they, but it's great, just the population is skyrocketing, but you've got lower areas in other parts I, of the state where you're kids, saying. So it's got to be interesting changed. Point. It, it is an interesting point. I think what. Senator that, Long, that, ahead, that, that has got to change, uh, but uh, again... Uh, it's but what are we going to do, gentlemen? Right now, at least three to four counties um, are going to end up with less money for their students, all, and they've lost their tax base. Would one of those be Charleston? Sir? One of them is Charleston. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I, I, really, I really did not think that the index of tax ability would apply after we did this. I didn't either, and I raised that question, and, and, and you know, the response was, well, how can it apply? I, I'm going to ask the Attorney General for an opinion because I think the legislature, by implication, made the index of taxpayer ability null and void. That, was one, property tax relief that was one of the advantages of the bill to try to equalize those funding across the district and to the index of taxpayer ability. Well, Senator and I, and I believe I, I remember your vote, you and I voted in those debates on that amendment that would have the state roll everything out. Right, right. Because this, the money uh, should come through the state. I think we agree, Senator. I, I think the implication was that if they were getting X now, they wouldn't get anything less than X right. through this plan. And if that plan changed that, then, then, then we have to revisit that. There's no question about that. That's, that's great. Well, we're going to get a chance, I think, in the next several weeks. Uh, I think this is a growing issue because, like Oconee County up in the mountains now, has faced the same thing. They would get less money, but they can't make up the deficit because of tax base. Right. right. And uh, we we got a real problem here with public education. This, and, and you were touching on it earlier, both of you, but this funding formula has got to be revisited. It's antiquated, it's complex. And I don't think it serves the purpose that it used to serve for public education. Since because I tell you another thing's the problem with the bill is that some districts, one Pickens County and, and Spartanburg District Five up there, they uh, they use a so-called Greenville plan to to uh, to sell a lot of funds to uh, to build buildings, but they put it in the operations budget. So now what you've got is this state is paying for buildings in some districts and they're not paying them in others. We've got to correct that as well. Well, that is an interesting issue too. 
very quickly because we're just about out of time. Anything you all want to say in a in, in few seconds that are left that, uh, about this uh, thing? I, I appreciate both of you. I think it's a debate that's going to continue in the General Assembly. Choice, empowerment, um, uh, school funding formulas, all of it. I think everybody's trying just to improve education. Any parting comments? Well, I would, I would say, Senator, you know, one of the things, as you recall, that we debated a lot last, in last year's debate was Senator Groon's and Shaheen's equity funding plan. And I think, um, I can't remember how you voted, but I, I was voting one of the few Senate Democrats that was voting no. And, and the reason I was voting no, I'm not necessarily opposed to the state funding all the school districts. When I hear equity, sometimes I think of my hands going like this. Those that are doing well coming down and those that aren't doing well coming up. And, and I'm not for penalizing districts that have gone beyond perhaps what the state would, would pay um, to subsidize others. I'm for bringing all those up, Senator. Well, I'm for and, and both I, going up. I hear you, but with us, <coughs> our time's out and we're going down. So yes, with this, we'll wrap it up and say thank you for being with us, and we'll be back next week to talk with you about this week in the Senate.